Welcome to this video on Thresholds from the tabletop role-playing game, Geist, the Sin Eaters. The Sin Eaters are mortals who are born just a bit different. If not with a foot in the proverbial grave, then certainly an eye or an ear. It's what draws the Geist to them when their deaths come. The Geist is the other half of the equation. Geists are ghosts who simply refuse to go quietly into the underworld. They hang on to life by tying themselves to an aspect of death and then wait for their moment. When the potential Sin Eater meets their demise, the Geist comes to them at the brink of their death with a bargain, a partnership. Continued life in exchange for letting the Geist tag along for the ride. Of course, the partnership does have a few strings attached, such as being a beacon for every nearby ghost which may want someone to help them or are looking for someone to hurt. And then there are those entities of the underworld who take offense at the Geist and the Sin Eaters' attempt to escape death. But without further ado, the thresholds of Geist. The Torn. It can be as valiant as a legendary last stand, sword in hand against overwhelming odds, or as pitiable as cowering on the sidewalk as a gunman puts the pistol to their victim's head. A few are self-murderers, suicides who realize too late that they weren't quite done living. But all of the Torn die by violence. When they come back as one of the Torn, they come back pissed off. Some of it is the Sin Eater, but a lot of it comes from the Geists who join with them. The Bleeding Ones embrace pain and violence. Some enjoy it. Other chosen of the Red Horsemen make themselves the lesser evil in the world, bringing violence to those who might inflict it but never suffer it. They adorn themselves in various regalia of bloodshed, sometimes as blatant as guns and swords slung across their hips and backs. Others prefer more subtle nods to their threshold, like a suit lined with an embroidered death mask pattern in the jacket. As for the Geists of the Torn, they are of two categories. Many are violence junkies, looking for the Sin Eater's killer so that they can bleed and suffer before they die, then go on to encourage them to more violence, to create new ghosts to feed into the underworld. Because the Torn are so often filled with wrath and die by bloodshed, their manifestations are unlocked by the keys of passion and stigmata. The angrier they are and the more they hurt, the easier it is for them to channel their plasm, often to deadly effect. The Silent For some, death is a mercy. When you have suffered for long enough, whether from lack of food or water or even air, the black silence that comes is not the end of life, but rather the end of pain. The man who crawls across the desert until his body and brain shut down for want of water. The miner who claws at the walls of his caved-in tomb for just one more breath of air. The starved who, in a black irony of nature, die with bloated bellies and shut their eyes hoping that the pain will finally stop. Others die because they are forlorn. For these, a life without love is simply not one worth living. They tie the noose around their own necks. They swallow the pills in hope of never waking up again. They open their own veins in the bath, the mix of warm water and the chill of blood loss carrying them to their last sleep. But it is want that sends them all into the underworld, where the geist of the black horsemen find them and deliver them back to the world that caused them so much pain. Yet both geist and sin eater want more of it, return to this world with a boundless appetite and an endurance that is inhuman. The silent are often so, keeping their heads when those around them are losing theirs. It is not so much that they believe that this too shall pass, but that the silent can withstand anything. In exchange for this superior stamina, the starving ones are driven by need. A need to see, to know, to feel, to experience, especially the underworld and death. Each of the silent bears some marker of their threshold on their person, the scales. Whether it is something as subtle as a tie pin or as garish as a tattoo, Appropriately, the silent bear the keys of stillness and cold wind. A scale, perfectly balanced, is also perfectly still, unnoticed, a condition that is perfect to strike one's enemies from without their ever realizing it. When the time for stillness is past, the cold wind is as an air of the underworld, swift, cutting, and capable of stealing a mortal's last breath right from their lungs. The Prey Despite what the Romantics and their ideological descendants might think, nature remains red in tooth and claw. There are those who die not from the cruelty of man, but rather from the indifference of nature. Humans have been gored, bitten, poisoned, 
clawed and trampled since time immemorial, rarely from malice, but due to the primal instinct of beasts to survive. Other humans have met nature's challenge and been found wanting. They were pulled under by currents, frozen to death in snows and ice, scorched beneath the equatorial sun, buried beneath falling rocks or sliding mud, or consumed in forest fires. The geist attracted to the prey are some of the oldest and most primal of their kind, very nearly beasts themselves. The shades of the pale horsemen like to wander in the wild places of the earth, seeking patterns in the seeming chaos of nature, patterns of life and death. The eaten and the drowned, in keeping with the western images of their patron, the pale horseman, often bear the icon of the scythe. A few go so far as to have some depiction of the grim reaper on their clothes or bodies. Others, especially among the Eden, prefer some animal part or symbol, a rabbit's foot, a rattlesnake's tail, a wolf's tooth, or the like. As the prey, geists are rather bestial, and they bear from the underworld the primeval and grave dirt keys. The primeval key gives the sin eater some power over the same forces of nature that caused their first death. The grave dirt key allows the sin eater to utilize the earth as both their sword and shield in combat. The stricken. Disease has been a constant companion of humanity. Whether it is cancer, pneumonia, typhus, cholera, malaria, the bubonic plague, the common cold, HIV or AIDS, or more recent maladies, it is not the great that kills, but the microscopic, forcing the body to betray itself until death claims them. Bacteria and viruses destroy the body from within. The simple unfairness of it, to be delivered into the underworld by something so small, is what draws the geists of illness to the sin eater. Sin eater and geist alike want to survive, to overcome the thing that destroyed them, to conquer the dead who have succumbed where the sin eater is chosen to live. The symbols of the stricken are the crown and the arrow. The arrow marks the sureness and swiftness of the white horseman's arrows. The crown indicates that disease is the king of death and that none may overcome their own illness unless the white horseman allows them to escape. The stricken can be anyone, rich or poor, slave or free, learned or ignorant. All men or women may be brought low by illness. The ravaged ones are often called back to life by geists that are horrific, creatures that take on disturbing appearances in order to terrify the sick and dying. As the stricken suffer, so do they receive the keys of the phantasmal and the tear-stained. The phantasmal key opens the door of illusions, some so powerful that they can bring death to those who see them. The tear-stained key is also the key of water and of those who drown. The Forgotten Sometimes, death has a peculiar sense of humor. Some people die in unusual, if not comical, ways. People who die through their own ineptitude or circumstances so fantastical that the odds of anyone dying similarly is one in a million. Those struck by lightning, let's say. Or those were hit by a toilet falling from a Russian space station. Someone who slips and falls down the stairs breaking their neck. The seeming randomness of their demise gives the forgotten a sense that life is a gamble and the surest thing to do is play until you lose. For the longest time, most living and dead thought that there were only four horsemen, but the Forgotten believed there was a fifth, a gray horseman, who slays by a simple throw of the dice. Chance, and nothing else, determines who becomes one of the lightning struck. Supporting this theory of chance is the seemingly unusual circumstances that surround a Forgotten One whenever they appear. The Forgotten embrace the iconography of chance. Most prefer some form of dice or coin. Others utilize the imagery of the tarot, particularly the major arcana of the fool, the wheel, and the tower. A few use I Ching hexagrams, but these are outliers. There is little the forgotten share in common with each other, save for the unusual circumstances of their deaths and the keys of industry and pyre flame. The industrial key gives the sin eater power over machinery, though it tends to have unusual effects on more contemporary devices. The pyre flame key gives the forgotten power over fire, ash, and immolation, making them rather intimidating to deal with when roused to fury. And those were the thresholds of Geist. Geist the Sin Eater owes much of its lineage to mediums, Mummy the Resurrection, and Orpheus, 
as it does to rape the oblivion. Probably more. The Geist is something in between the Tem Ak of a mummy and the shadow of Wraith the Oblivion, whereas the Sin Eater stands between a medium and a risen. The Geist is not inherently antagonistic, but it does have an agenda of its own, and the Sin Eater's existence is kind of a symbiosis. While the Geist values its host, it is not entirely sympathetic to humanity or human concerns. Another consideration is that Sin Eaters are hard to keep down, almost as hard as mummies or Prometheans. The trade-off is that life has to pay for life. For the Sin Eater to return from death a second time, someone else has to take their place in the underworld, and the Sin Eater gets the dubious pleasure of experiencing their death, which is rarely a peaceful or a pleasant experience. Unfortunately for the Geist game line, it's somewhat thin on material. Geist has few books of its own, and other information can be found in other Chronicle of Darkness game lines or the World of Darkness supplements. Apparently Geist 2nd Edition changed the thresholds into burdens, and I might do a video on it later. Anyway, that's all I have for now. Until next time.